Hi there, it's Sandra here from Creating Spain. If you could see my craft room now, it is littered with pieces of card that are cut. I have 13 sheets of card which have been printed and cut and I'm about to start making my project. Now this is a project from the Canon Creative Park website. It has been a challenge so far because Originally, I thought, oh, this is great. I'll just be able to scan this in and cut it. And unfortunately, the person who designed it, I mean, great job of design and all the rest of it, but they put a printer's bleed on it, which of course means that the cut lines that I wanted to put on weren't going to be scanned in and in the right place. So I've got all my bits done now. And this is the first bit that I'm doing. Now, it is actually a very cute little bakery. And I just thought it was adorable. I fancy doing it and I will probably end up giving it to a child if I can find someone suitable to give it to because I've got nowhere to put it anyway but it was just something I thought it was so sweet I felt like doing it so this is a door to the bakery and I have creased all the relevant lines on it Actually, I better make sure that one is creased. Yeah, there we go. Put a crease in there. And I'm now going to show you how to actually put it together. Because I looked at the instructions and I uh, what? Mm? It's not as bad as I thought it was. Uh, it goes together quite nicely. First of all, I'm going to put a little bit of glue up that white line. Because this is a valley fold and this piece here comes up and over that one there and gets stuck. There. There we are. And then all of these sort of roll around on each other. So you end up with, let me just zoom in a bit so you can see better. You end up with this um, sort of cornice, if you like, in the corner of the door. So it has a door post, I suppose it could be. Now the rest of this needs to be stuck down. And had I noticed, because the lines were very faint, had I noticed, there is actually another bit of cutting that I should have done, which was for the door itself to open. And I just didn't, I didn't think about it. We got 13 sheets of paper to cut and I was having so much grief by the time I got to that bit. It was like, I really don't care. <laughs> straight not quite oh typical not quite straight okay there we are I think that's better oh it's going to be one of those days is it <laughs> it's taken me forever and a day to get all these bits sorted so this needs a bit more glue on it because it's not stuck properly. And that literally rolls around onto there. I might put a pair of tweezers to pinch if I can find it in there. Yeah, it is in there. Put that down in there and pinch is the way to go. Now, the bit that I've actually got to cut is along there, up there and around there. And I know I've got to cut it, but I decided I would cut it with the pieces glued together. I figured that was probably easier than trying to do it and matching it up afterwards. So I will end up manually gluing, sorry, manually cutting something. My heavens, a pair of scissors. Using a pair of scissors. I shall go into a state of shock doing that. So that is the door bit done. And I'm going to let that dry before I do any more assembly and before I do the cutting. This is what you end up with because you 
cut around the door. Now I will, for my own future use, <laughs> I will amend the file so that that cut line is already in place because I don't find using a scalpel particularly easy. I'm not very good at it, which is why I've got a cutting machine. But it's a little bit peculiar when you look at the instructions, but it does actually make sense. I do advise if you use any of these files to look at the basic instruction that they have right at the beginning. They do give you plenty of instructions with diagrams, but make sure you know what the arrows mean and the mountain folds and the valley folds, etc, etc, because that will make it so much easier for you to do the folding necessary when there is any folding to be done that isn't obvious. So this is actually going to be the left part of the shop with the door open. And so it's actually done reasonably well. I'm quite happy with that. All the pieces are numbered. And what I've done when I've printed these and cut them out, I've kept them separately on my desk with the individual pieces still in the holes so that I can tell what goes where and where it came from. Because if you just took everything out, it would be horrendous. <laughs> now, when I'm scoring, what I tend to do is use a silicone mat. I've got an empty biro, you can use a ball tool. This is quite small and relatively fine, so I decided to use an empty biro. It's got a slightly finer point. And I do that with a ruler to do my score lines. And because the silicon mat has got a little bit of give, you don't have to put any great pressure on it to do your score lines, but it gives it a little bit of wriggle room to actually give it a proper score. So I'm going to do all the score lines and then fold this one up and show you. So again, these two white areas go together. Put a bit more glue on this time. Didn't put enough glue in before. Fold that down. Fold it back. Give it a good press. There we are. So all the other ones are mountain folds. And they simply wrap up like that to give the edge. All that goes in and then the glue goes on here for it to glue it together completely. And as I said, fortunately there's no cutouts in this bit. And then that winds up with that there. Oh, it's got a little cuckoo clock. There we are. So we have the two sides to the shop. Right, this bit is pretty simple. We've got the door, we've got the other side wall, and this is the back of the cafe. And these pieces here just attach onto the sides. There we go. It's up to you whether you do it from the back or the front. <laughs> it makes very little difference. Blue on here. Now what I'm going to try and do is see if I can work out a way where I can give you the file for the cut lines. I cannot give you the print, I can't give you the PDF, um, it's not mine to give. But I think I would be reasonably safe in giving you cut lines, simply that would be like giving you a pair of scissors. So if I can give you that in the right size and a format that's usable, then I will try and do that. And I forgot to do the score line on there. I've got them on the other sides, but I've not got it on the back. It's starting to look like the back of the shop. Okay, so this just pops in here. And it's looking good. You've got a little bit of a gap there because you need to be able to fold it. If you put it right into the corners, you would find that it just wouldn't fold that well. But I want to put the score line on here because it gets folded back to the inside. 
There you go. The designer of this one is Minya Somimachi, I think it is. Excuse my pronunciation, but that's what it says on the file. And the glue goes on here. I've been quite impressed with the glue. I got myself some, what is it? It's Eileen's Fast Grab Tacky Glue. Uh, just to try it out. I got it a while ago, I hadn't started using it. And usually it's when I do 3D projects that glue start playing up on me. So I thought, I'll try using it for that and see what happens. So you get that. Yeah, not bad. Don't think it goes there just yet because it's actually got to wait for these two things here to go in. They don't go out, they go inside there. So those go in first and then that folds in afterwards. Those are the steps. I've got to do all the fold lines and fold it all up. Now making the steps looks a lot more complicated than it is, but the first thing to do is to crease all the crease lines going backwards and forwards so that you have the ability to turn it whichever way you need to. And then you literally wrap it up and join it just like you would for making a tube. These two wing bits here are the bits that you want to have flat. And then you want a step going up, in, up, and in. So from the side, it's going to be looking like that. These little tabs are going to be glued in place, the little triangles. So the triangles need to go in like that. That gives you a little support, basically, for the step. And then these bits on the end fold up over the top to provide the rest of the support. So the first bit is getting those tiny little triangles to stick. Actually, I'll do the glue on the other one as well. And a pair of tweezers I think might not be a bad idea. I apologise if it's gone out of focus. My camera doesn't really like it when I get really close. So do the same with the other side. Yay! So those go against the door. They go on this piece here. Just make sure you stick the right part to the right part because if you get that wrong you're going to have a great deal of difficulty getting it off again. Just make sure you can open the door still. I'm just going to put this one on for the time being because I need to put something on there. I might find it a bit difficult to put it on if the side is already up. All right, so we have the little packet of sandwiches or the rack of sandwiches. The decorative piece folds forward. These two pieces fold in and you have some pieces which are folded in half and glued. And then these glue onto the edges here to form a little decorative um, little bit on the side there. The red dots match up, the shapes match up and they fit on like that. And then that is literally going to be stuck into place on the back wall. As you might expect, that's exactly where they're going to go. This is it so far and folded in the front. I've got my sides glued in place, got my little sandwich rack there. And the next thing to be done is there's a little roof to go on and that will make it even more stable. But it's actually not too bad considering how thin the card is. It's not feeling too flimsy, so I'm quite pleased. The next things to do are the signage and the roof. And both of these are pretty simple to put together. Once you've got all the score lines in place, it becomes pretty evident as to what you've actually got to do. And as I said, they do have diagrams to follow. So I'm just going to glue these together and then see what's next on the list. Well, I've put this together and what I would say from my experience of having done it is make this up and stick it on here before you actually put the sides of this together because 
when you do it as they suggested by making both of them and then putting them together it's not as easy to actually press it together to make a good bond just slots over the top of this but you do not glue it on I don't know if you do eventually but for the moment you do not glue it and there we are there's the basic frame made for the actual shop the next piece I'm making up is the bakery stand and this piece is quite intricate now when I looked at the file and all the cut lines and everything there were cut lines on this part here to cut these pieces out but there weren't any cut lines shown for this side and so I didn't cut those bits out I had to do them afterwards now what I did was I basically folded one behind the other drew through the hole and then scanned it in my machine and cut it out that way because some of these pieces have got very narrow areas to fold so for example this part the side has got quite a delicate crease here and if you don't fold it before you try and glue it all together you'll end up having a very difficult time with it and that one there goes in that direction now remember mountain folds have got little dots like rain falling from the sky and the dashed ones where you've got a dash and a dot are valley folds where the water runs that's the way i remember it i'm quite used to it because i've done origami for years so so i've done those and i've scored these but i haven't actually folded them yet and you can put them in both directions to make it more pliable and that one i know has to go around that way And you want to put a bit of a curve in here, so again, what I like to do is to try rolling things around a pen. If you've got anything that needs a curve, it's a good idea. Whether it's a pen or a Q-tip or whatever, it just makes making that roll shape a lot easier to get. So the first thing I need to do is to glue these pieces back in here so that they can fold up and form the sides. So I've folded those pieces to the inside, that's easy. This piece here gets glue put on it and that folds down to the inside. So that just covers the white area, like so. Okay, so this was relatively simple to put together. You've got little tabs which go underneath the canopy there. This piece actually goes to the back and there's a reason for that I'll show you soon. Do not make the mistake of putting the shells in the wrong order because the thicker one needs to go on the base. Now this flap here actually goes inside this piece here and glues on. So you want it with the front side facing. That goes up and it literally goes inside there at the fold. So it's going to be easier to do this without having the roof on the cafe. A lot easier to do it that way than it is to try and do it with the roof in place. So once that's on there, this can be slotted back on. Now if you want to glue it, you can our little bakery stand in the front. We've got some cakes here and that just gets folded up and put on the front of the bottom piece in the shelving. Because this bit gets folded up so that it's got kind of like a triangle at the end. That can go in place on the bottom rack and there is also this tiny little menu type thing which Again, just has some glue put on the bottom tab and then it's stuck behind the capes. If you can just see it, that's just behind the capes there. The cat is two pieces. In the file that I made, I made it so they're two separate pieces. They're glued at the head 
and then the two tabs join at the base so it does get a bit of dimension but that's easy enough to do. These little packets of sweets which are really cute and there's what looks like a baker's box again very cute most of the little bits and pieces that go in here are pretty self-explanatory regarding the uh, making of them so i'm not going to go over all of them the next thing i'm making is a cake platter so this if you cut it by hand they get you to fold a piece in half and cut two at the same time because I was cutting it electronically, of course, I didn't do it that way. So line them up like that to form the plate part of it. And this is where the base goes. And this one forms a cone and a little bit of glue on there. Put it together and then the plate sits on top. The little cake is made pretty easily. It's fiddly, but it's not difficult to do. It's basically a box, it's wrapped around, but what you do have to remember is that you have areas which are sort of rounded over the top, so it's not completely flat. But that's the little cake that goes on the cake stand. There's a little cake which is designed to go on this stand. It's a very simple thing to put together if a little fiddly and it's all in one piece it's pretty obvious how it goes together and then that goes on the cake stand you can glue it on there or not as you wish i'm not going to glue it on for the moment i've got some other little bits and pieces to make and i'll come back when i've done a few with this cake what you want to make sure you do is do the slice that's taken out first that gives you a good basis for the rest of the flaps that have got to be stuck down and that one has got a little plate to sit it on. Right, I've just put this table together, not my finest piece of work, it's come out decidedly rustic looking but hey it might be a battered old table mightn't it? <laughs> so yeah definitely not my finest piece of construction but <laughs> what can I say? For these cookie jars, I found that the easiest way of doing it is to use something which is approximately the right size to wrap it around. They've got these, which are cut in pairs. You stick together the top part and you leave the bottom part loose and you put it through that hole and you stick it in on the inside. I don't think it looks really wonderful, so I'm going to see if I can find a small bead. Here are some of the little bits that I've made included in this file. We have a little bakery box which opens up and you could put some of the little cakes inside. I've got one, <laughs> one tiny little slice of cake in here. There we go, quite sweet. Um, you could always make some extras of the cakes if you wanted to. I think it's a very cute little box. There were some bits which I didn't bother to make or some bits which I made and thought, nah, I really don't want to bother keeping that. Um, one that I didn't make was the stool. I really didn't see that it was going to add much to the look. This is a basket. I'm in two minds about this one. I've put a little Swiss roll type cake in it and it had some flowers. I thought the flowers were a very strange thing to put in a bakery basket, but you know, maybe that's just me. So that's my table and I've got it covered with some cakes. Now I've chosen, because I'm gonna give this to someone basically as an ornament, I've chosen to glue these in place because Everything is so lightweight, it just moves with the slightest breeze or touch or whatever. And things are just gonna get lost, damaged, whatever, if you don't do that, I think. And one of my favorite bits is this little donut truck. I think this is so cute. Now, none of these bits are very difficult to make. The instructions are pretty clear as to how to do it. The only one that was a bit fiddly was the handle so just pay attention to how to make that um but yeah pretty pretty easy going 
and here is the rest of it. So we have the stand with its little canopy, we have some cake stands, we have a basket with a couple of packets of sweets in, we have the sandwich rack on the very back though that you can't easily see from here but you might be able to just see it from there. Uh, a few more of the cakes. The cat I've put behind this little cupboard and the little jars of cookies are glued onto the cupboard top. Now, a couple of things which were a little bit fiddly to do with the cookie jars because they are actually hollow and this piece of furniture here is hollow I didn't put them on there until I'd put the furniture in and glued it in place and it was actually quite difficult to uh, glue these on because this gives and the bottom of the cookie jars gives. So you might want to, for example, stuff this with a tissue or something so that it gives it a bit of resistance on the inside so you can do that. And again, on the inside of the cookie jars, you might want to put something in. Now, if you're just making this as an ornament, you could use anything from foam clay to polymer clay, basically anything, cotton wool, whatever. Just don't think that this is a suitable toy for a very young child because it is not, okay? A, it's pretty delicate. There are far too many small parts. This is highly unsuitable for a young child who might be tempted to put things in their mouth. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it for a very young child. Now I haven't glued on the roof, but I did glue this. I glued the back of that to this roof here. I glued it to the side panel and I've also put some very thick uh, foam underneath here, double sided foam tape and made that stable there. This one as yet I haven't but I'm going to put some glue on here to make sure that, that stays put because otherwise it's not going to. Um, yeah so that's it. I think it's a really really nice project. Now on the Canon Creative website they say about three hours. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> I've probably spent three hours on it this afternoon. I'd already made part of it up yesterday and that doesn't include the cutting time. So you're definitely gonna want more than three hours. This is definitely quite a long project to do unless you are super, super quick. And the difficulty is everything is so small that you're virtually using tweezers to put it together. But it's lovely. I think it's really cute. I'm just going to have to find someone to give it to and uh, I have no idea who that's going to be at the moment but I'm sure somebody would like it as an ornament in the bedroom you know a young child maybe um, but not an extremely young child or at least if it's in a young child's bedroom far enough up on a high shelf so they can't reach it look but don't touch anyway that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you again soon